Friday. It is another day, another amazing, beautiful day here in Pittsburgh. And uh, got the day off. Sam has a half day today, so gonna do some record shopping. As always. <laughs> oh my God, the, the city is so hazy today. It is. I probably should not be wearing pants, but you know it's one of those things. I'll, I'm gonna be coming around the corner here in a second, so I'll show you. Take a look at it. But I'm just gonna do some record shopping. I'm gonna head over to the attic in Millvale, which is an amazing record store. Uh, they had a move record before we went to Mexico, so hopefully I can get that. You know, the move to Brewwood. So I take a look at the city today. That is hazy, hot, and humid, as they say. There may be some thunder showers later on. If you're from Pittsburgh, you probably know that. It's a joke. So, yes, I'm trying to do these videos every day. It is hard, let me tell you. The people that do videos every day, my hat is off to them. Uh, but I'm just going to try to do, you know, I'm going to try to do it as, as many as I can and just kind of show you the awesomeness that is Western Pennsylvania. And, uh, hopefully inform you about some records and music and life in general and uh, hopefully that you can take something out of this and hopefully I can get something out of this, I don't know, I just, it's something to, to be able to document and, and have this for even posterity's sake. Check out the train going there. This is Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So. Um, I'll check in back with you here when we're at the attic. We've got some, a little bit of highway to go here, probably about three more miles or so, and, uh, and I'll, I'll catch back in with you. I don't really have too much to talk about today, but I'll get back to you. All right, so we're in Millvale, home of the attic, the attic record store. Uh, probably one of my favorite record stores <clears throat> in Pittsburgh. They, they do do a lot of um, doo-wop. <laughs> there's just there's a guy in front of me just getting out of a truck. Is the door open? We're just we're sitting here. This is great. And uh, so, yeah, so the attic has a lot of doo-wop records. They're, um, the music that they that they have is pretty cool. I mean, a lot of it is. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can go around this guy here because this is. I have no idea what this dude is doing other than blocking traffic. I don't think so, sir. That's right. Going around you. Um, they have a lot of doo-wop, a lot of 45s. The the, the owner, Fred, um, Fred Sr., is, I mean, he's very, very knowledgeable. He's, there's a uh, Mad Mike, who was a DJ in Pittsburgh. He did a compilation album on Norton Records, and uh, Fred actually did some of the liner notes on it, which is really cool. Um, we're just about there, just another block or so. And, oh, there's tons of uh, parking meters open for me. Let's hope they're open. <laughs> I think it's noon. I think they, I'm not sure what time they open up. They're open. All right, here we go. All right, we will take that meter there. So, turn the old vehicle off. Take a look at that. It's really cool. They have these little murals in front of it. The attic records. There's another one. We'll go take a look at those here. So, I'm going to get out of the car. All right, so again, we're outside of the attic here. Here's the best part about the attic. Well, one of the best parts is the, uh, the parking meters out front. You get 30 minutes for one dime, which is, that's pretty fantastic. I mean, considering that uh, this is, you know, if you get a quarter for an hour, so, you know, if you do the math there, it's, it's easy. So, right, I'm going to go inside. I'll take you with that. So, I have to admit, I just about had a heart attack when I walked over to the, uh, the front of the attic here, because look, the Black Angels are coming to Pittsburgh. I don't know if you guys know who these ba this band is, but they are totally awesome, like totally throwback, uh, kind of sound like the Velvet Underground, the 13th Floor Elevators, all that good stuff. So, um, yeah, time to go in the attic. Alright, so we uh done doing some record shopping at the attic. I got some amazing records. I was there for about an hour and a half. Uh, parking meter expired and I didn't get a ticket, so I feel fortunate. So let me show you what I got. I bought, this was all about $90 for all of this, but I got the Wild in the Streets original soundtrack album. A lot of Davy Allen and the Arrows on there. 
This was for Sam the Sham. It's pretty crazy, just sort of, um, I don't know, some sort of, uh, I'm guessing either uh, Mexican or uh, Brazilian music, I think, by the way that this is. So, um, I don't know, just sort of loungy, psychedelic kind of stuff. Really good. Got this one, Bird's Sweetheart of the Rodeo. If you don't have this album, you want to get it. It has uh, Graham Parsons on it. It was a bit when Graham Parsons was in the... Uh, the birds, I noticed that somebody put a beer can or something like that on that. I got the McCoys, the uh, You Make Me Feel So Good. doesn't have Hang On Sloopy on it, I don't believe. No, it doesn't, but still one that I needed, so. Uh, got this, it's just a two compilation uh, record, just crazy funk music from like the 60s. It was really good, we were like jamming to it in the store. Um, King Crimson, this one goes without saying, it's like $6 for this one. Um, the Best of the Move, pretty much it's a compilation, but it has most of the, all the singles and all the really good stuff, so I have another one that's like this, so I probably, probably really didn't need to buy this, but it has, you know, all the good stuff, Brontosaurus, Blackberry Way, um, you know, Fire Brigade, you know, El Yellow Rainbow, here we go around the lemon tree, so really cool stuff, um, this I got for Sam and Sham, it's, uh, girl groups, basically girl sounds um has leslie gore on it with uh sunshines lollipops and rainbows uh which is sam's one of her favorite songs she just always sings it. it's ridiculous youtube it uh, i'll see if i can put a link in here in the uh the bottom there uh the jimmy caster bunch oh my god this is the craziest like funk record ever so good there's like maybe one clunker on there everything else is fantastic but uh it was eight bucks and um uh, the, the guy that works there, was, they had two copies of this. One of them was on the RCA. One thing you got to worry about the RCA records is they did like Dynaflex, which those records are just the thinnest records ever. Uh, this one is like uh, later pressing, so it's a really it's a thick record. So that was cool. Uh, got the Illusion. Uh, this one also eight dollars. Um, the uh, Did you see her eyes? Is the is the big track on this one. I think that this band was from the uh, somewhere in New York, I think the Bronx, actually. Um, I have a single on one of my channels here for it, so take a look at that if you get a chance. Um, got the mono copy of You Lost That Love and Feeling by the Righteous Brothers. Two smackers right there. Um, this is really good. You know, it's Phil Spector. He's got Phil Spector's on the back there with the Righteous Brothers. They had the stereo version, but I thought that, you know, you probably want to get the mono versions of these. I mean, I think the stereo was probably worth more, but the way that this is intended to, you know, mono, obviously, Phil Spector. I mean, I don't, I don't even need to go into that. Um, and this was $3, just sort of some random, uh, it's an, uh, obviously a, uh, uh, it's like Brazilian music. Um, it's a, uh, it's an import. Uh, it's not an import, it's an export, I guess. It's the original, uh, you know, it's all, in, you know, has, uh, you know, all that, uh, import label stuff, not not a U.S. pressing. It's really thin. Usually those, you can tell those, you know, they're like cardboard, it's all falling apart. Um, but I'm going to go get a case of beer because I <laughs> just want to keep this day getting better. So uh, we're going to go in the beer place and I will be back. So so I got a case of Pacifico, which was what we were drinking like crazy when we were down in Mexico. We weren't drinking it like crazy, but <laughs> we were drinking large quantities of it in Mexico. It's it's made in Mazatlan, Mexico. So I got a case of that because it was a pretty good beer. There was a police over there as I was vlogging and driving at the same time. So funny, uh, funny thing that. So anyhow, I'm heading back and I got to make some salsa because we got some people coming over tonight. And Sam left me a big list of things to do and I told her that I wasn't going to do any of them. And I'm going to hold myself to that. Just kidding, I'll probably do everything on the list. Alright, so a little bit of fantastic record shopping today. You know, like I said, spent about $100. Ooh, big fender bender over there. Uh, somebody got rear-ended. We got ambulances. Here they come. Look at this. Whoop, whoop. There you go. Big wreck. Um, but it's, uh, you know, record shopping is definitely fun. And I mean, it's something that I've been doing for a while. Probably about 10 years now. Um, you know, and I, I do collect, you know, there's a, a point of me that does collect, but most of it is just to listen to the music. I mean, you know, it, if you can buy a record for, you know, two, three dollars, you know, rather than, you know, taking a chance and buying it on CD for like fourteen dollars or whatever, and, you know, downloading is cool. I mean, that you know, everybody I think is kind of guilty of downloading something in their, you know, in their lifetime, but, 
you know, it's, it's, it, you, you lose something when you do the downloading. I mean, there's, you know, when you actually go out to the record store and you, you talk to people and you learn about music and, you know, I mean, you can, I can spend all day reading whatever I want to online, but, you know, at, at the end of the day, you know, I, I'm going to take home, you know, what I heard in the store, you know, it's just, there's something about it that, that with record shopping that's great. And, you know, it's it's something that's lost in sort of the, you know, the, the cyberspace. But it's just, you know, it's one of those things where it's just like, I could go to Goodwill and get Dark Side of the Moon for like 75 cents, like 10 years ago. And now it's like, you know, that's pretty unheard of. So one thing with, you know, records that they have come around a little bit, and there's certainly a market that people are, you know, trying to, you know, collect more and, and buy more and, um, you know, that there's that false market with eBay where it's just like, oh, well, it's this much on eBay, so this is how much it's worth, but, you know, which is a load of garbage, basically, because it's about the music, it's about what's contained on the record, it's not about how rare the record is. So, and unfortunately, the Catch-22 is that rare records are, you know, usually expensive records. Sometimes they're good songs, sometimes they're good because it's expensive, you know, it's, you know people are crazy when it comes to that kind of stuff, so. But, rant over, I gotta go get some gas here, and uh, we'll go and uh, make some salsa.